Okay, so let's talk behavior of graphs and inequality. So, this time I'm going to look at the graphs in the shaded region and I'm going to come up with the equation based on behavior. Alright, so we always begin with our y-intercept. So my y-intercept right here is at positive 1. I'm going to put a positive 1. Yes, Ryan? Okay, they're right here. Then I would need my slope, right? That's a pretty steep slope. So, my slope, I'm going to count from here, I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, over 1. My slope is 3 over 1 or just 3. Now, I like to look at these. Yes, sir? Yeah, you have this. Um, I like to look at it as pink clouds. All right? Pink clouds. Anybody ever been on a mountain road early in the morning and you're actually on top of the clouds? Isn't that cool? Yeah. So think of this like that. Okay? So if I'm standing right here, this is the road. Where the line is, we're on the road. I'm standing on the road. Do I stand do I stand up, take a step up to get into the clouds, or do I take a step down to get into the clouds? The clouds are pink. I have to step down. Right? So this is less than. Let's try another one. Yes, sir. If it's dashed, it does not include the values on the line, so we don't have a line underneath it. Okay? So when you have a line underneath it, it means less than and including. You know what I mean? Like you put more, line also. Exactly. Make sense? Okay, so let's do this one. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to start at negative 5 on my graph. What's my slope? Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, so just x. Do I stand up to get into the clouds or down to get into the clouds? Up. So this is greater than and equal to because it's a solid line. Better? How many of you struggled with this a little bit in Algebra 1? Many people should have their hands up because a lot of people struggle with inequality graphs. Okay, so hopefully this is going to sink in now. So I'm going to go down one. It's where I cross my y-intercept. So negative one is my y-intercept. And I'm going to go up, let's see how many. One, two, three, four over one. But this time it's a negative slope, right? Oops. So negative four x. Do I have to step up to get into the clouds or down to get into the clouds? Down. down. So this is less than or equal to. One, two, three, four. When I go down four, my slope. What's my slope on this one? How far do I have to go up before I can start going over? One over two, right? That makes sense. If I have a slope of one half, isn't that a slope that's going closer to zero? Right? It's not as steep. Now do I have to step down to get into the clouds or up? Down. So this is less than. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I start at 6. And what's my slope on this one? I have a negative slope, right? Negative x. And is this going to be step up or step down? Oh, oh. Up, so greater than. <laughs> like this? What do you mean? You mean not actually... Like this? Yeah. You're either up or down, right? Yeah. That would be why, if this was shaded up, no, left or right. Left or right. Yeah. 
Oh, I understand. Wow, that took a lot, huh? Then it would be, this would be greater than, this would be less than. Good question. It just took me a second, right? Okay, down one, two, three, four, five, six. So, sorry, not positive six, negative six. And what's my slope? Up two, two. over one, so two x. And is this a greater than or less than? Greater than. You guys got that now? Greater than, less than? The whole cloud thing really works, huh? Because when you have it like this, where's a good example? That, it's, or this one, this one's a good example. A lot of kids look at this and say, but that's greater than. All of that is shaded this way. But see how you have to step down to get into that solution space, right? That one really trips a lot of kids up right there. So we're all good? Awesome. All right. Graphing inequalities. The shaded region of the graph includes every good solution. The graph of the linear or absolute equation is the, we call it a certain name when the line, right, the line whether it's below or above the line, that's the solution. But the actual line is our boundary. A solid boundary line indicates all the solutions that are included in the solution. And then a dashed boundary line indicates all the solutions that are not included. Good. Excluded. Yes, you could write excluded. Ready? Okay, pencils down. Awesome. All right, so at this point in the game, I think I can, without doing every single step, manipulate these graphs, right? If I want to put this in slope intercept form, then I'm just going to move my 4x to the other side. Correct? So I would get y is less than or equal to my negative 4x goes first, right, minus 1. So I'm just going to do the same thing we were doing right now, just in the inverse. I'm going to come up with the equation and then I'm going to graph it. So I put it into slope intercept form. I'm going to begin right here, negative 1, and I'm going to move right here. B for begin, M for move. Ms. Liz taught me that. I think that's pretty cool. Alright, so I'm going to move up four. One, two, three, four. Let's do this with blue. One, two, three, four, and to the left one because it's a negative four. So there's my line. Is it going to be a dashed line or a solid line, I ask myself. It has a line underneath it, so it's going to be solid. Make sure I have a solid line here. And then I need to consider my solution space. Y is less than that. So all of the values on the line and less than. So I'm going to stand on my line and I'm going to step it down. Next. I'm going to test a point. I always test, I always test 0, 0. Let's do this in black. No. I don't want to mix it up with that point. Let me make it pink. Don't need my orange, too. Okay. So I'm going to test 0, 0. Is 0, 0 part of my solution space. Right there. Right there. Is that part of my shading? <coughs> it is not part of my shading. So if I plug in or substitute in 0, 0, I'm going to get a false statement. Does that make sense? This, it does not belong in there, right? 0, 0 does not belong in the solution. So if I were to take 0, 0, just like if I were to put 
Zero, zero wouldn't lie on that line either, right? See what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm going to substitute zero, zero. Here's my original equation. Four times zero plus zero is less than or equal to negative one. Correct? Is zero less than or equal to negative one? No. That is a false statement. If these two match, then we're happy. If they don't match, then you're wrong. Your shading is wrong. Get what I'm saying? If I were to shade, if I were to substitute in negative two zero, what do you think I would get? Let's try that. Negative two zero. Is negative two zero part of your solution space? Yes, that should be true. Let's plug it in. Negative two for x, so four times negative two plus y, y is going to be zero, should be less than or equal to negative one. Is negative eight less than or equal to negative one? True. See how they match? So no matter what, you should always get your space right, your shading, because you should always test a point real quick. And testing zero, zero is the very easiest point to test, right? It should just take a few seconds. Okay, so here are my steps. Convert to y equals mx plus c. Consider my boundary line, whether it's solid or dashed. Shade the solution space. Test a point. I'm going to do another one. Question so far? Yes, sir. So what you did there was like a check. It was a check. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. I would use zero, zero whenever you can. It's the easiest point to use, right? You could use any point on your graph. But zero, zero is the easiest one. Okay? Some people don't like doing that. They'd rather put it somewhere where the solution is and then make sure it's true. You can do that, just like I did with this one. But I like to use zero, zero. I just make sure I make a note. I always tell myself, it's going to be false. Then when it becomes false, I say, okay, it's good. Or I'll tell myself, it was this, the shading was on this side, I would tell myself it's going to be true because zero, zero is part of the solution. Okay, let's do another one. So I'm going to manipulate this graph, right? I'm going to convert it to y equals mx plus c. Just have to subtract x from both sides, and I get y is greater than negative x plus I'm going to begin at 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to move negative 1. So up 1, and then in the negative direction 1, or down and to the right. All right? It's, some people like to go down and over. I like to go up and over. I always go up, and then I decide whether I'm going in the negative direction or in the positive direction. That's just the way I do it. Alrighty, so this is going to be a dashed line because it does not include, the solution is not on the line. And then I have to consider whether I'm going to step up or step down to draw my cloud. I'm going to step, this is greater than, so I'm going to step up. I'm going to test a point. It's real easy. If you're a little uncertain, if you test a point, you'll know if you're right or not, right? So if I test 0, 0 right now, I should get what type of statement, true or false? Should be a false statement. So I'm going to say 0 plus 0 is greater than 6. Is that true? It's false. So I'm happy. I do. It's the easiest one to use. You don't have to. You could put in there, let's see, a solution would be a thousand and a thousand. No thanks? I'll stick with numbers, yes. But not zero, zero? That just confuses you? Okay. All right. Why don't you guys try this one? But before you try it, Some of you will see it right away. How would you convert this? 
put it into a fraction. So this would be one half x minus one quarter y is less than three halves. Now what would you do to clear the fraction? Multiply by not just two, you flip, you've got one more here, four. So if you multiply everybody by four, you'll clear all those fractions. You guys go from there and try and do this one on your own. Do you really want to graph it with the decimal? Does that look like fun? No. You've got to be able to be comfortable with changing things to fractions. So look at What's four times one half? And four times one fourth? <coughs> See how those cancel right there? So I get negative y, right? Here, I can do this extra step. If this is confusing you, we can do this. Four times one half x, I'm going to distribute, right? Minus four times one fourth y is less than think of money. Fifty cents, right, is half a dollar. Twenty five cents is a quarter of a dollar. And one point five is one and a half dollars. So one and a half 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3 halves. Good question. You're probably not the only one that had it. So, that goes away and I have 2x. That goes away and I have the negative y. And that goes away and I have 6. I'll let you guys work from there, and then I'll show you what I got. Okay, so let's look at this together. So I'm going to move 2x to the other side. When I do that, I get negative y is less than negative 2x plus 6. But most of you should see that that still doesn't put it in slope-intercept form. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is still not in slope-intercept form because I have a negative. So can't I just take the inverse of everything? So the inverse of negative y is y. The inverse of less than is greater than. The inverse of negative 2x is positive 2x. And the, and the inverse of positive 6 is negative 6. Right? Just like if you had negative 2 equals, I'm sorry, just like if I had negative x equals 2, you divide both sides by negative, right? Or aren't you just taking the inverse of both of them? Okay? Everybody okay with that? Alright, so now I've got an equation. I'm going to begin <coughs> at negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to move up 2 over 1. This is a greater than sign. So it's a dash line. And it's greater than, so that means I'm going to step up. This time I'm going to test what point, Jesus? Zero, zero. zero. Right? All right, so no state secret, right? When I plot zero, zero, I'm either going to get a true or a false statement. False. True. <laughs> true. Right? If you're at zero, zero, that's part of my solution, correct? What? Okay. You like it better if it's true. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to plug that back in or substitute 0, 0 in here. So I get 0 is greater than 2 times 0 minus 6. 
zero is greater than negative six. Is that true? Yeah. Yes, they're both true, so I'm good. <coughs> Questions, anybody? Okay. You good? All right. Pencils down. Let's look at these. All right. Now we've got absolute value. I'm using the same steps, except now I've got a table here, a T table or a T chart. So I need to manipulate this equation. So I would add 2 times the absolute value of x to both sides. When I do that, I get y is greater than negative, sorry, it's going to be positive now, 2 times absolute value of x plus 3. I know from behavior of graphs that if I've got this add 3 outside of everything else, that usually means it shifts up 3, but I'm going to test that right now. That just gives me an idea of where we're going to start, <coughs> correct? I'm making an educated guess on where I'm going to start on my graph. So I'm going to put 2 times absolute value of x plus 3, and over here is going to be y. So I'm testing 0, and I'm hoping I'm going to get 3, right? I'm going to substitute in 0 for x, so 2 times 0 plus 3, and yes, in fact, I get 3. Where would you test next? I test 1. I get 5. Over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Correct? And so I know that usually graphs are, absolute values are symmetrical, right? So if I tested that one, I'm going to test that one right there. Negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5. Is this going to be solid or dashed? Dashed. But I have to change this because I'm going in one direction this way and one direction this way. Now I just have to consider where that, those are my boundary lines. Now I just have to shade. If I'm standing on the vertex, I'm going to go <coughs> up. So different than a linear, right? Because on a linear, it's either a 50-50 shot. It's either the, everything on the positive values or on the negative values. This one, it can be a little tiny portion, or it could be a really great portion, right? Okay, so last, I'm going to test. Zero, zero is what I'm going to test. And that should be a false statement. So, 0, I'm using this one right here. You can use this one or this one. Doesn't matter which one you use. So, 0 minus 2 times the absolute value of 0 should be greater than 3. <coughs> 0 minus 0 is 0 greater than 3? No. They're both false, so we're happy. Convert to y equals mx plus c, table of values, consider the boundaries, dash or solid, shade the solution space, test a point. Questions on this? Pretty straightforward? Let's do another one. Do I have a question? Because the absolute value of a negative 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. Right here, 1. No. Remember we started this in the beginning? We'll look at it like this. The meaning of absolute value means the distance away from 0 on the number line. So the absolute value of 1 is 1, 
and the absolute value of negative 1, got it, is also 1. That's why. Yes, sir? There can be no negatives that come out of absolute value. Now, I think on the next problem, the third problem we're going to do, it'll be a little different. Okay? So you'll kind of see the difference between the two. Okay, so here's my steps. I need to convert it. Oh, it's already converted. Let's look at the behavior of the graph. Whenever I have a value inside, right, how would that shift? To the right. So I'm going to guess, my educated guess is I'm going to be right there. So absolute value of 2x minus 1. Let's substitute in a value for 1 and see what happens. 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh-oh. It's right there. Huh. I wonder why that happens. Let's see. What would be the next easiest point to put in? Let's try 0. If I put in 0, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, right? But the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So if I put in 0, I get 1. Now, this kind of makes sense. Wouldn't you say that there, we already know that absolute value is symmetrical. So wouldn't you say that's your vertex? So it's still shifted over, but this 2 being making it like a skinnier graph is making it kind of shift over right here. You know what I mean? So that's our axis of symmetry there. All right. So I can't tell for sure without actually substituting it because couldn't it also be here? Right? So we need to make sure. So I'm going to put in, but just because I have that 2 here, I'm pretty sure that when I put in a half, it's going to work out. So 2 times 1 half minus 1. What's 2 times a half? 1. What's 1 minus 1? <coughs> and I'm right. And all you need is 3 points, correct? This is less than or equal to. So I'm going to go solid. There's my graph. Now I'm going to stand on that vertex, and I'm either going to go up or I'm going to go down. Less than or equal means I go less than. What does less mean? Down. down. All the solution on the outside of it. Okay? I'm going to test a point. Test 0, 0. If I put 0, 0 in, am I going to get true or false? Yes. True. So y should be 0, sorry. 0 is less than or equal to, see what I'm putting in right, just right in here? The absolute value of 2 times 0 minus 1 is 0 less than or equal to 2 times 0, 0 minus 1 is the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. Is 0 less than 1? True. <coughs> Questions? You guys ready to do one on your own? Yes. Yeah. Alright, try this one. Okay, so let's talk about a behavior of a graph, guys. First of all, if I want to change this a little bit, I would move my absolute value of x on the other side, correct? So I would get y is greater than or equal to, when I move it over here, it becomes negative. Now, the behavior of that graph is shifted up, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's going to be pointing, what would this look like? Oops. What does that look like? This right here. What's this graph look like? A frowning parabola pointing down. 
So shouldn't, if we think about behavior of graphs, shouldn't this absolute value graph look like it's pointing down? Pointing down. If you really think about where the um, arrows are going, we're going to, but they're not. I'll just do it. Okay. So, negative absolute value of x plus 4, y. So I'm going to plug in or substitute in 4 for my first value and check this. Negative absolute value of 4 is Evan, right? Or is Evan? You were asking me what happens or no. Is it you or is it Evan? It was, it was Evan. Okay. See how that is 4, the absolute value of 4? But the absolute value of 4 is 4, correct? But there's a negative on the outside. So don't I still just get negative 4? See the difference? Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So 0, 4. Oops. What happened? Oh, I plugged in 4. I was supposed to plug in 0. It does still work. That's one of our points too, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. But I meant to plug in 0. So 0 plus 4 is 4. 0, 4. Well, that kind of works well. I wouldn't normally substitute in 4 because it's so far over here. But if I did it, wouldn't I also have another one over here? Yeah. Let's do one that we would. 1. Let's substitute in 1 and see what we get. If I substitute in 1, I get negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. So because of symmetry, I'm guessing if I substitute a negative 1, I'm going to get the exact same thing. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, but I have to apply a negative to it. Plus 4 equals positive 3. So now, see how it's going down? Look where my arrow, how my arrows are pointing. This is pointing down. The line. You're thinking the vertex. But this vertex is down. I mean, it's up on the graph, but it's point. These are, I guess, I'm con these are pointing. Your arrows are pointing down. You're continuously going negative, 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 negative. All right, so now I need a shade. I'm standing on the point. Am I going to go up? for greater than or down for greater than? Up for greater than. I'm going to test a point. I'm going to test 0, 0. When I test 0, 0, I should get a false statement. 0, 0 should come out false. I'm going to take this right here and substitute. 0 greater than or equal to negative 0 plus 4. Is 0 greater than or equal to 4? Nope. They're both false, so we're happy. Wow, that's not a very good happy sign. There we go. Happy. Really happy. Okay. Ready to finish? Questions, anybody? I hope I was recording. Good. All right. Last one. Manuel has $15 to spend at the fair. It costs $5 for admission, $0.75 cents for each ride ticket, and $0.25 cents for each game ticket. Write and, write and graph an inequality for the number of ride and game tickets that he can buy. All right. How much time do I have? Five minutes. I'm not going to go all along and draw analysis. Okay, so he has 15 to spend. It's five dollars for admission. It's 25. This is what he's spending at the fair. Five dollars plus 25 cents for each game, plus 75 cents for each ride, and all of that has to be. 
less than, well, the sign is greater than or equal, but I like to look at it like this. I'm, I'm looking at this side, all this step has to be less than 15. Or 15 has to be greater than all of this. Right? Okay. So, how could I rewrite these? You can't add them together. These are, oh, these? One fourth and three fourths. One fourth and three fourths. Fifteen is greater than or equal to five plus one fourth G and three fourths R. Once we've got that, I'm going to now multiply everybody by what? Four. four. If I multiply everybody by four, I can clear that denominator. So I'll multiply this by, sorry, not three, four, like I said. Distribute a four to everybody. When I distribute a four to everybody, I get 60 is greater than or equal to 20 plus G plus 3R. Fractions are gone. Which is the easiest variable to solve for? G. So let's put G on this side and 60 on that side. Subtract G from both sides and subtract 60 from both sides. I'm left with negative G is greater than or equal to 3R minus 40. I just move things around a little bit. I'm trying to make it look like y equals mx plus c, right? Just like the other graph. But I don't usually have a negative in front of y, so I'm going to take the inverse of everything, which is g. I have to make sure I switch that sign too, right? Inverse of g, inverse of greater than makes it less than or equal to negative 3r plus 40. G is where Y usually is, right? So G goes here, and R goes here. 40. I've got to start at 40. I better count by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Now I could go down 3 over 1. I'm going to count by 1s here. I could go down 3 over 1, or I could make my life easier. Couldn't I also write this? Is it negative 15 over 5, negative 3? Now I'm counting by 5. Right? Doesn't that make more sense? So if I were to go down 15, 5, 10, 15, and over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my line. It's less than or equal to, so it's got to be solid. Oh, but I don't need this because it's going to have an ending point. It's going to end over here. There's going to be a point where if I take that many rides, I'm not going to get any tickets for games. And this means that I wrote that I played 40 games and no rides. Good job, guys. If you want your test, you can go ahead and, or your quiz, you can go ahead and wait here for it.